Do I have any fans of carousels in the house? Please write a plus in the chat. Sorry, because it's, uh, it's easy to see the chat. Any carousel fans? Patrick is a fan. Great, Patrick. You are, oh, Nasia doesn't like them like at all. Mm. Okay. Okay. Not many fans of carousels, but Nicholas loves them. And in fact, what's not to like? Look at how beautiful they can be. That's a beautiful, wonderful carousel with a carousel in the background as well. That's beautiful. Unfortunately, most of the time, these carousels are not really well designed. Now, we ended up in the world where this is something that we're used to when you think about the carousel. We have an arrow. We have the dots, which indicate some sort of progress, right? And this is how we navigate the carousel, right? This is pretty much it. This is all we've got, right? But when we look at them, you know, you really need to work very hard to understand why do you need to actually click through this carousel, right? Well, there are different kinds of carousels, of course. When you look in Turkish websites, which I did for fun, because, you know, everybody has time uh, during um, the lockdown, uh, this is a different kind of carousel. These are not the carousels we might be used to, like, at all. They don't use dots at all. Instead, there are plenty of numbers. Is it better? Is it worse? At least it gives you a state of a carousel, right? You can say, oh, go to number 13. That's better than, you know, count, you know, 13 from the left, right? Probably not what we want, right? But still, it kind of gives us an idea. Maybe they could look different. Now, on mobile, there are plenty of dots for your convenience. So if you ever wanted more dots in your life, here we go. You find all of them right there. But if you keep going, I was really asking myself, why is it that there are not dots used in uh, Turkey? This is just really strange. And then sometimes, I, eventually, I stumbled upon Miliet, uh, news website, I guess, uh, which is just a... Uh, you know, and uh, I would say an, ex an exhibit to me. There are all kinds of carousels you ever wanted in one. Do you want a horizontal one with numbers? Go for it. You want a vertical one with numbers? Oh, we have one. We have one with th thumbnails. Sure, here we go. And then, of course, a traditional small little content slider, because why not? Now, sometimes they just they look a little bit uh, different, but sometimes they're just confusing, which we definitely need to fix. Can you tell me how this carousel works? Anybody? So we have numbers. One, two, three. What would you do here to swipe for the carousel? Do you know that this is a carousel? Yeah, so Alice is right. So you would click on number two. And then you would click on number three, right? So instead of using dots, you know, we would be using numbers, which kind of swipe to the left. And then you have these layers moving back and forth. But do you know what people do in tests when I was testing this? People click like crazy on those different layers, which have different backgrounds, because they expect them to be interactive. They are not. This is where frustration comes from. Here's another example. Can you tell me how this works? So you have something on the left, right? And you have some text next to it. Any ideas? Yes. So we usually would be expecting that we can drag the slider, right? Well, unfortunately, this is not quite how it works because it is actually a horizontal carousel. In order to use it, to move it, you actually have to swipe left and right, which is not quite what you were expecting. In fact, it doesn't matter where you tap, right? You actually end up literally kind of going to the beginning or to the end of the carousel, right? And so if you wanted to move it around, you actually need to swipe left and then it indicates that something is changing. And I think this is very symbolic because <clears throat> every time we have this mismatch of the movement and the orientation of the design component, we have problems like that. The same thing can happen in very different scenarios like here, right? So here we also have a carousel in the right upper corner, but there are two arrows, right, indicating the direction of the carousel. And yes, it kind of is aligned so because you're moving vertically, but that's not quite what we would be expecting from a carousel like that. Right. So this is where, and it's also not sliding or kind of moving. It's more, more abrupt. Right. And I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I get those things all the time. Here's another one. Right. Can you tell me how this works? There is a carousel on the left. And there is a dot, dot, dot floating for some reason as well. Now, this is where we take a carousel. We have these dots. Right. But then we group these dots to indicate a particular category and you can jump to one or the other part of the carousel. Right. And that seems to me maybe over engineered a little bit because it seems just too complicated. 
So when we look at this and we look at all these examples, they all share one thing in common, right? They all share one sentiment that we don't need carousels in our life, right? And in fact, designers like ourselves create passive aggressive websites, should I use a carousel.com, answering a question within a carousel, right? Which is kind of funny. But then when we look into data, you know, when we look into this typical carousels that we are, we've seen previously, yes, how many people see number two, number three, number four, number five? Two to three percent. That's not much. So we could say, let's kill the carousel and go home and forget about them. Not so fast, because this story is not complete yet. We need to kind of read this graph in two ways. On the one hand, yes, if you have a carousel, you have a box, you have arrows and you have dots, that's not going to help because only most people will see only position one. But there will be people who will be going through all the other ones. So if we encourage people enough to click on the second slice of the carousel on third, they will go very often for all of it. And that really heavily depends what kind of experience you're designing, right? Because if you're working with e-commerce, this will look very, very different. This is where people will go almost the entire carousel. This is the reason why Booking.com has sometimes 70 or 80 images in their carousel or image gallery, right? Because when you want to invest money into something, when you're interested in something, when you want to be sure that you're making a good decision, you need convincing arguments you know, to convince yourself that this is a good deal. And you need to understand that, of course, oh, you need to distinguish, of course, between, you know, carousels, image galleries, and all those things. But it's very important that we cannot just dismiss a carousel. Kind of showing pictures in a carousel-like style is actually quite important. In fact, when we look into e-commerce, we'll find out that it's probably going to look like this. We will have a kind of incremental decline or decay in uh, viewing carousel slides, but it's never going to go from 100 to 1, right? So this is quite important. However, one thing is important as well. Uh, you know, obviously number four, number one, number two, number three, right? The first few slides are going to get a bit more attention than the others because as people start using a carousel, they keep using it faster and faster. So over time, they might be skipping over some parts of the carousel, right? Now, what can we do then to make use of it? How can we make carousels better? Well, one way would be to, if you do want to stick to the dots which in reality do not indicate anything but the progress, right? Mm -hmm. You can make these dots a little bit bigger, right? That, that, that's the minimum we can do, but this is not good enough. Another thing we could do if you need an auto-rotating carousel is to include the pause button, at least for the sake of accessibility, right? Because otherwise people will just abandon or scroll down, right? If it's just too frustrating and too annoying. So having a pause button is important as well. Or maybe, you know, like Amazon does it, um, oh, it actually looks the same on, a mobile as well, right? Um, or maybe uh, you could say, let's make it a little bit more usable. Why do we need to show the dots? We can actually choose to show progress in a slightly different way. So we have this horizontal bar uh, at the bottom, right? And as you scroll left and right, you have the arrows, so you can jump predictably back and forth, right? And then you kind of indicate where the person currently is. Right? Maybe we could do that. Or even better, let's add some labels instead of dots. Instead, in fact, I would say, if you can always replace the dot with something actionable, something tangible, something like a label. So here we actually add a label right here, which actually disappears when you um, remove the, the, the mouse, right? But at least it gives me a bit more context of why I would even want to click on it. And I kind of like the fact that it's actually complemented with a slider, which indicates the progress, right? And also, as you hover over it, it actually shows the video of what you should be expecting to see, which I think is quite nice. And it looks almost the same on mobile. You just you have this horizontal thing. But of course, a uh, vertical thing is, of course, if it's lengthy, if your labels are lengthy, you know, it's probably going to be difficult to read, but you kind of get the idea, right? Uh, but we can take it to the next level as well. Because, for example... You know, why not replace each label then with something like an icon or something that's actually just more communicates a bit more? That's uh, stripe.com uh, where they highlight, um, you know, jobs opportunities. They kind of have these little indicators indicating different parts, right? That doesn't have to be just a lifeless dot. It doesn't represent anything. It's a little bit more actionable. And again, I'm just showing this because sometimes you might be in a position where you might want to do that. Right? Or take a photo, for example, like on Weber.com, right? It's definitely more actionable than just showing a dot as well. But then comes the magical question, which I spent approximately one week on. That was really frustrating to me. When I look at this kind of pattern where you have the arrows, right? You can swipe left and right, 
but at the same time you have arrows which allow you to swipe left and right or jump left and right now coming back here hold on where should these arrows be because there are three positions for them right we could place those arrows right here above the images right or above the thumbnails or right here in the center kind of or as overlay on top of the images or below the images right now can you vote on oh, no, not vote can you just type above middle or below just to kind of get the idea of where you would like them to be uh well we can go in conversations why that's that's for later that's interesting let's see so I think I saw only two belows, most uh, middle and above. And I don't know about you, but these questions bother me at night. This is why I cannot sleep sometimes because I have to make the call, right? I have to recommend something when I'm working with the company. And so uh, I'm, I'm not going to crush your dreams, but I do want to mention a few things. First, the best way I think to place the, the arrows, and I have tested it, is to place those arrows under the images, under the thumbnails, but mostly for mobile. Why, would you ask? Because if you happen to be on mobile, and if you have those arrows above or right on the images, you would always need to lift a finger to actually read the content of each thumbnail, right? If they are positioned under the image, you can click left and you can click right, and you don't have to move your finger at all. You can just keep clicking all the time while being focused, on that thumbnail that you're actually reviewing. That seems to be performing way better than uh, you know, any other position that I've seen. So maybe we could consider that as an option, right? Or even better, are you ready for this? This is going to change your life forever. I promise, I promise. Uh, it doesn't have to take the whole screen on mobile. Uh, if thumbnail takes the whole screen, then I would still put it on uh, at the bottom actually, right? But then here, uh, here's the other part. Uh, which I think is genius. I would use it as a reference example for any kind of carousel. First, replace dots or remove dots or just ignore them or replace them with something like a stepper. It is a little bit different, but I absolutely love how it works. So on desktop, it's above the images, right? Then you go to mobile. Uh, come on, keep going, right? So it's still, it's still above the images. And now, hopefully... Darn, keep going. Right? And then at some point when you're on mobile, it's just where it needs to be. Right? It's at the bottom on mobile. It's on top on desktop. I mean, that's exactly how it should be. That's exactly what seems to be performing best, uh, at least in my experience. Right? Uh, and in fact, you can make it funnier. You don't have to do it like this boring way, I guess. Um, this is a really great uh, implementation on ritual.com as well when you kind of have these arrows integrated in a way, but also backgrounds kind of swipe and change. That's really beautiful. For me, this is a really well-designed uh, well carousel. Why not have that uh, instead of everything that we're used to, right? So I think that this is really brilliant, right? Um, and in fact, of course, if you can't afford this and you want to go a little, something a little bit more enterprise or corporate, there is a really great uh, test that Amazon did a while back, and they tested plenty of options that this is what they went with. Again, basically just replacing dots, which do not provide any context with something that provides context. In that case, it's label, uh, some text next to it, thumbnail, right? And essentially just a tab menu now, uh, which kind of acts like carousel. So it's auto-rotating and it goes from all the sections and it seems to be working well for them. And in fact, I would challenge you to test if removing dots performs better. Why? Well, this is what Amazon did, right? Instead of showing these dots, which people usually tend to click on, so you need to make them bigger, so that would need more space, right? As you load the page on mobile, on Amazon, you probably hopefully can see this little animation that's triggered to show that there is something in there, right? Or if you don't want to do an animation, you can at least show a little bit of a clip saying that, oh, 80% of my screen is dedicated to this current thing that I want to show, and the other 20% indicates that there is something else, right? Is anybody with me at this point so far? Yes? So do we, did we feel in love with carousels at the time, at the moment? Not yet. Would you change the Netflix UI? Uh, frankly, I don't know. We can look into it a bit later. Would you say adding more pictures of thumbnails creates more cognitive noise? Um, I don't know. I think it actually works really well when I was testing it on Booking.com. And again, I wasn't hired by Booking.com. I was just really curious if it works or not. People are clicking through like 
like there is no tomorrow, right? They're going all the way in because if they're interested in paying for something, a particular amount of money, well, they will just go in, right? So what are your thoughts on left-handed users? Frankly, when we look into a position of the arrows, right? Um, it doesn't matter that much if it's kind of aligned to the right or aligned to the left, because in the end, it's going to be just focused on close enough position, right? However, you know, if you do have arrows in the right upper corner and somebody is left-handed, that's a problem because they're definitely going to be blocking the content while watching it, right? And the photos are indeed very appealing. All right, well, but that's one part of the story, right? Let's move to the next one. And I also have the summary, but it will take just too much time to read all of that. You can also find it on the slides, right? Oh, feel free to take a screenshot. 